Welcome everyone to Free Code Camp. I Kisle on behalf of Edureka will take this session on natural language processing, popularly known as NLP. Now Edureka is a global e-learning company that provides online training courses on the latest trending technologies. So without any further delay, let's have a look at the agenda for this session. So I'll start off by explaining the evolution of the human language. Then we'll understand what is NLP and how it came into the picture. Moving forward, we'll have a look at the various application of NLP in the industry. And next, we'll understand the different components of NLP and the difficulties faced while implementing those. And finally, I'll finish off this video by explaining you guys the various steps or the paths involved in the natural language processing along with the demo for each one of those steps. So the success of human race is because of our ability to communicate, that is information sharing. Using this ability, we have marched ahead of other animals and have become the most sophisticated creatures. And this is what differentiates us among all the other animals. We begin to look for ways to preserve our thoughts, feelings, messages, and other information. We started with oral communication like other animals, but because of its ephemeral nature, we began painting on walls and caves where we lived. Now there was a need to standardize the drawing so that everyone could understand. And that's where the concept of developing a language came in. However, many such standards came up resulting in many languages, with each language having its own basic sets of alphabets, combination of alphabets, which were known as words, and the combination of words which were arranged meaningfully, which became the sentence. Now each language has a set of rules based on words and are combined to form these sentences. Now these set of rules are nothing but what we call it as grammar. Now I'm not going to take any more time explaining you guys about grammar and all. Now coming to today's world, according to the industry estimates, only 21% of the available data is present in the structured form. Data is being generated as we speak, as we tweet, as we send a message on WhatsApp, Instagram, iMessaging and various other platforms. Majority of this data exists in the textual form, which is highly unstructured in nature. Now in order to produce significant and actionable insights from this text data, it is important to get acquainted with the techniques and the principle of natural language processing. So let's understand what exactly is NLP. Now natural language processing that is NLP refers to the artificial intelligence method communicating with an intelligence system using natural language. Now it is a part of computer science and artificial intelligence which deals with the human language. By utilizing NLP and its components, one can organize the massive chunks of text data, perform numerous automated tasks, and solve a wide range of problems such as automation summarization, machine translation, named entity recognition, relationship extraction, sentimental analysis, speech recognition, and topic segmentations. Now we'll learn about all of these later in this video. Now the goal here is to process I'd rather say understand the natural language in order to perform useful tasks. Some of these tasks include making appointment, buying things, spell checking, generating responses, and social media monitoring. Now, if you look at the various application of NLP in the industry, firstly, we have the spell checking, which is usually there in, you can find it mostly in words or the document reader, even online also you can do the spell checking. Now, next we have keyword search, and it is also a field where NLP is heavily used now extracting information from websites or any particular document also requires the knowledge of NLP. Now one of the coolest application of NLP is the advertisement matching, which is basically a recommendation of ads based on your search. What it does is analyzes the text of the data which you are already using or searched and match it with the text data of the advertisement. Now sentimental analysis is also a very major part of NLP. Another application is the speaker recognition. Now here we are also talking about the voice assistants like the Siri, Google Assistant, the Cortana, and we need to thank Apple for creating the first voice assistant that is Siri. Now next we have the implementation of chatbots. Now most of you guys might have used the customer chat services provided in various apps. Now most of these apps use the chatbot, which is it uses NLP to process the data which we entered, and then it provides response based on that input. That is also an application of natural language processing. Now another application of NLP is the machine translation. Now the most common example of it is the Google Translate as you know. And now it uses NLP to translate the data or I should rather say the text 
from one language to the other and that too in real time now nlp consists of two components which is the natural language understanding referred to as nlu and the natural language generation which is referred to as nlg now understanding the natural language involves mapping the given input in natural language into useful representation and analyzing different aspects of the language now natural language generation is the process of producing meaningful phrases and sentences in the form of natural language from some internal representation now it involves text planning which includes retrieving the relevant contents from the knowledge base it involves sentence planning which includes choosing required words from meaningful phrases setting tone of the sentences and finally we have text realization it is mapping sentence plan into the sentence structure now we'll learn about this later in this video and usually natural language understanding which is nlu is much much harder than nlg now you might be thinking that even a small child can understand a language so how come it is so easy for human beings and so difficult for the computer to process it so let's understand what are the difficulties a machine faces while understanding a language so in natural language understanding there are certain ambiguities which are the lexical ambiguity syntactical ambiguity and the referential ambiguity now understanding a new language is very hard taking our english into consideration there are a lot of ambiguity and that too in different levels now starting with lexical ambiguity lexical ambiguity is the presence of two or more possible meanings within a single word it is also called semantic ambiguity for example let's consider the following sentences and let's focus on the italicized word now she is looking for a match now what do you infer here from the match word is she looking for a match that is head to head match or is she looking for a match as in a partner the fisherman went to a bank is it the bank where we withdraw our money or is it the bank where he rows his boat or he catches the fishes now syntactical ambiguity in english grammar this ambiguity is the presence of two or more possible meanings within a single sentence or a sequence of words it is also called structural ambiguity or grammatical ambiguity now let's have a look at these sentences the chicken is ready to eat so is the chicken ready to eat something or is the chicken ready for us to eat so this is a kind of syntactical ambiguity which is often very hard to infer for a new person or I'd rather say a computer because it means the meaning of the sentence is different for the different tones or in different aspects so for example if i look at the last statement i saw the man with the binoculars so do i have a binocular or the man has a binocular it might be possible that you might be thinking that oh, i saw the man with binoculars means that i have the binoculars but somewhere some people might think that the guy which i am seeing has the binoculars rather than me so that is syntactical ambiguity now coming to the third ambiguity which is the referential ambiguity now this ambiguity arises when we refer to something using pronouns now the boy told his father the theft he was very upset now when we talk about he was very upset if you focus on the italicized word he does this mean that the boy was upset or the thief was upset or the father was upset nobody knows this is referential ambiguity now coming back to nlp for using nlp onto our system or doing any natural language processing we need to install the nltk library that is the natural language toolkit so nltk is a leading platform for building python programs to work with human language data it provides easy to use interfaces to 50 corpora and lexical resources such as wordnet along with a suite of text processing libraries for classification tokenization stemming tagging and much more now let me show you how you can download nltk now in order to download nltk just go to your python shell and just type in the word nltk dot download using the parenthesis and then you will get this type of a window pop-up which is the nltk downloader you just need to select all option and click on the download button and it will download all the corpora and the text it has all the packages it has into one single place and you can choose the directory where you want to install it it's better if you download it in your python directory only it will be easier for you to access all the files and the, all the text which it has to offer now when we process text there are a few terminologies which we need to understand 
So the first terminology here we are talking about is tokenization. So it is a process of breaking up strings into tokens, which in turn are small structures or units that can be used for tokenization. Now it involves three steps, breaking a complex sentence into words, understanding the importance of each of the words with respect to the sentence and produce a structural description on an input sentence. So if we take the sentence today, we'll understand tokenization. So as you can see, we have five tokens. The first one today, we will understand tokenization. So all of these words in computer terms are known as tokens. And this is what is referred to as tokenization. So let me show you guys how you can implement tokenization using the NLTK library. So here I'm using Jupyter Notebook. You are free to use any sort of ID also. My personal preference is Jupyter Notebook. So first of all, let's import the OS, the NLTK library which we have downloaded and the NLTK corpus. Now let's have a look at the corpora which is being provided by the NLTK. That is the whole data. So as you can see, we have so many files and all of these files have different functionalities. Some have textual data, some have different functions associated with it. We have stop words, as you can see here, the state union names. We have Twitter sample data. We have different kind of data and different kind of functions here. So let's take the brown into consideration. As you can see here, we have brown and brown zip. So first, we all we need to do is import the brown, and then let's have a look at the words which are present in the brown. You can see we have the fluton, country, grand, jury, said, and it's going on and on. Now let's have a look at the different Gutenberg fields. So as you can see, under Gutenberg file, we have Austin MR text, we have the Bible text, we have the Blake poems, the Carol Alice text. We have the Edgeworth parents dot txt Shakespeare's we have we have this Shakespeare we have the Whitman leaves so NLTK is a very big directory and a very big library to download you might need a couple of minutes to download this library so let's take the Shakespeare Hamlet dot txt and if you look at the words which are inside this Hamlet file we see it starts with the tragedy of Hamlet by and it goes on and on. So if we have a look at the first 500 words of this textual paragraph or what we say the textual file. So I'm using here for word in Hamlet and I'm using the colon and 500 that is the end point. So as you can see it starts with the tragedy of Hamlet by William Shakespeare 1599. Actus primus, scona prima and it goes on and on. So for natural language processing you can use either of the text which is provided here for understanding or you can create your own words. So for example, here I have defined a paragraph based on artificial intelligence. Okay, so it goes on like according to the father of artificial intelligence, John McCartney, it is the science of engineering and so on and on. So let us first define this string, okay, AI. Now why I'm taking a string is because it is easy to show you guys how to work on a string. So if we do the type AI, you can see it is str with a string. Now, under NLTK, we have the NLTK dot tokenize and we are going to import the word tokenize. Right, as a function, we'll understand how it works. Now we will run the word underscore tokenize function over the paragraph and assign it a name. Let's assign it as AI underscore tokens. So now if we'll have a look at the AI underscore tokens, you can see it has divided the whole AI paragraph which we gave into tokens. So as you can see, it has taken a comma also into consideration, the hyphen also, and it goes on and on. Now let's have a look at the number of tokens where we have here. So for that, we are going to use the length function. So as you can see, we have 273 tokens. Now from NLTK, we have a probability function, which is the frequency distinct. So I'll show you what it does. So for a word in EA underscore tokens, F test, and we are going to convert it to lowercase so as to avoid the probability of considering a word with uppercase and lowercase as different and then we are going to assign it a number this is basically a word count program and this is being implemented using the frequency distinct function which is already present in the NLTK library so let's see what's the output of this one so as you can see it comma has appeared 30 times full stop has appeared nine times question mark one and so on and on like you see, intelligence has appeared six times, intelligent six times, intelligently has appeared one time. 
Now suppose if we want to know the frequency of any particular word here So for that we are going to use the function f dist that is the distinct frequency So we are going to use that function over the particular word So for example, let's say I want to know the frequency of artificial here So as you can see it is three times and if we check it in the database you can see it is artificial it is given as three now if you want to have a look at the number of distinct words here all we need to do is pass on the f test function to the length function so you can see it's 121 so earlier we had 273 tokens and now from that we have 121 distinct tokens now suppose if we were to select the top 10 tokens with the highest frequency for that i am assigning a new f test underscore top 10 and I'm using the most underscore common function here and passing 10 that is the number of items I want So let's see the output So as you can see as I mentioned earlier comma appears 30 times that is the highest frequency of any word and Is appears five times. So these are the top 10 words which are the most reoccurring words in the given paragraph or the given sentence now let's use the blank line tokenizer over the same string to tokenize a paragraph with respect to a blank string So as you can see we are importing the blank line underscore tokenize Earlier what we did was import the word underscore tokenize and now we are using the blank line underscore tokenize And again we are passing the same AI paragraph which I gave earlier and then we are checking the length of the AI underscore blank So as you can see it provides us the output 9 now what it tells us is the number of paragraphs which are separated by a new line in our given document So suppose you want to have a look at the first paragraph or Supposedly the second paragraph All you need to do is pass on the number and it will give you the whole paragraph as you want Which is separated by a new line of course Now coming back to our tokenization part we have bigrams trigrams and ngrams now bigrams are tokens of two consecutive written words Similarly trigrams are referred to tokens of three consecutive written words and usually ngrams is referred to as tokens of any number of consecutive written words for n numbers So let us see how we can implement the same using NLTK libraries for bigrams trigrams and the ngrams So first what we need to do is import bigrams trigrams and ngrams from NLTK.util so let's take a string the best and the most beautiful thing in the world cannot be seen or even test They must be filled with the heart. What a beautiful code So let us now first create the tokens of the our string using the word underscore tokenize as we did earlier now to create a bigram what we need to do is Use the list function and inside that we are going to use the nltk dot bigrams and pass on the tokens So as you can see it has created a bigram of the given document Similarly, if we create the trigrams and the ngrams So all you need to do is change the bigrams to trigrams and it will give you the trigram list Now let us now create an ngram list. Okay So guys as you can see here We are using the same function nltk dot ngrams and inside that we are passing the quotes and the course token and Here in place of n we are going to give our number. So let's say suppose I provide five here so as you can see it has given us an n-gram of length 5 Now once we have got all the words or as I say the tokens We need to make some changes to the tokens and for that we have stemming Now what stemming does is normalize the words into its base root form So if we have a look at the words here, we have affectation affects affections affected affection and affecting now all of these words originate from a single root word that is the effect now stemming algorithm works by cutting off the end or the beginning of the word Taking into account a list of common prefixes and suffixes that can be found in an infected word Now this indiscriminated cutting can be successful in some occasions, but not always and that is why we affirm that this approach presents some limitations Now let's see how we can implement stemming and we'll see what are the limitations of stemming and how we can overcome them now there are quite a few different types of stemmer. So let's start with the Porter stemmer. So for that we are going to use from nltk.stem import Porter stemmer. And let's see what does this give us the output of stemming the word having. So as you can see it has given us the root word have. 
Now, similarly, if we provide a list of words such as give, giving, given, and gave, and I have given this uh, name of words to stem. So for words in words to stem, print words, and we are using the Potter stemmer, which is the PST dot stem method. So as you can see, it has given us the output give, give, given, and gave. So you can see the stemmer remove the only ing and replace it with e. Now there is another stemmer which is known as the Lancaster stemmer. So let's try to stem the same thing using the Lancaster stemmer and see what is the difference. So let's stem the same thing using the Lancaster stemmer and see what are the differences we have here. So first of all, we are going to import the Lancaster stemmer and we are going to provide LST, which is a Lancaster stemmer function. And in the similar manner that we did for the Potter stemmer, let us execute the Lancaster stemmer also. So as you can see here, the stemmer has stemmed all the words. As a result of it, you can conclude that the Lancaster stemmer is more aggressive than the Potter stemmer. Now the use of each of the stemmers depend on the type of the task you want to perform. Now we have another stemmer which is known as the Snowball stemmer. Now for Snowball stemmer, we have to provide the language which we are using. So similarly, if we use the Snowball stemmer on the given words, as you can see, it has given us a different output from the previous Lancaster stemmer. So as you can see, the output is the same as that of the Potter stemmer here, but it differs in different terms. Now the use of each of this stemmer depends on the type of the task you want to perform. For example, if you want to check how many times the word GIV is used above, you can use the Lancaster stemmer. And for other purposes, you have the Snowball stemmer and the Potter stemmer as well. So what happens is that sometimes stemming does not work properly. It does not always result to give us the root word. So for example, if we take the word fish and fishes and fishing, all of that stems into fish. So lemmatization is an, another concept. So on one hand where stemming usually works by cutting off the end and the beginning of the word, lemmatization takes into consideration the morphological analysis of the word. So to do so, it is necessary to have a detailed dictionary which the algorithm can look into to link the form back to its lemma. Now what lemmatization does is groups together different infected forms of the word called lemma. It is somehow similar to stemming as it maps several words into one common root. Now one thing to keep in consideration here is the output of lemmatization is a proper word. So for example, if you look back to our output given by the Lancaster stemmer, you can see it has given us the output GIV, which is not a word. So the output of lemmatization is a proper word. And for example, if you take a lemmatization of gone, going, it all goes into the word go. Now again, we can see how it works with the same example of words. Let's try lemmatization using the NLTK library. So first of all, we are going to import the word net. As mentioned earlier, it requires a dictionary which the algorithm can look into to link back the form into its original lemma. And since the output is a perfect word, so it needs to have a dictionary. So for, uh, here we are going to import the word net dictionary and we are going to import the word net lemmatizer. So let us first take the word corpora and see what its lemma is. So what do you think guys, what will be the output? As you can see, it has given the right output, which is the corpus. So let's use lemmatization on the given words. Uh, so as you can see here, the lemmatizer has kept the words as it is. This is because we haven't assigned any POS tags here, and hence it has assumed all the words as noun. Now we'll learn about POS later in this video, but just to give you a hint of what POS is, POS is basically parts of speech. So as to define which word is a noun, which is a pronoun, and which is a subject, and much more. Now, do you know there are several words in the English language such as I, at, for, begin, gone, no, various, which are thought of as useful in the formation of sentence, and without it, the sentences won't even make sense. But these do not provide any help in NLP. So these lists of words are known as stop words. So you might be confused as if are they helpful or not? It is helpful in the English language, but it is not helpful in the language processing. So NLTK has its own list of stop words. You can use the same by importing it from NLTK.corpus. So once we import the stop words, we can 
just have a look at the different stoppers which is provided by NLTK. So we need to mention which language we are using. So let's have a look at the number of stoppers we have in English format. So it is 179. So remember guys, when we use the fdist underscore top 10 to check the top 10 tokens which have the highest number of frequency. So let us take that again. So as you can see here, apart from the word intelligence and intelligent, all of the words are usually stop words. Or basically I should say that they do not match any particular word. They are like special digits and characters which do not add any value to the language processing and hence it can be removed. So first of all, we will use the compile from the RE module to create a string that matches any digit or the special character. Now we'll create an empty list and append the words without any punctuation into the list. So I'm naming this as post punctuation. And if you have a look at the output of the post punctuation, so as you can see, it has removed all the various numbers and digits and the comma and the different elements. Now, when I was talking about POS, which is parts of speech, now generally speaking, the grammatical type of the word, the verb, the noun, adjective, adverb, and article, now it indicates how a word functions in meaning as well as grammatically within the sentence. A word can have more than one parts of speech based on the context in which it is used. For example, if we take the sentence, Google something on the internet. Now here, Google is used as a verb, although it is a proper noun. Now these are some sort of ambiguities and the difficulties which makes the natural language understanding even much more harder as compared to natural language generation. Because once you understand the language, generation is pretty easy. So POS tags are usually used to describe whether the word is a noun, an adjective, a pronoun, a proper noun, singular, plural, verb, is it a symbol, is it an adverb? So as you can see here, we have so many tags and descriptions for the different kinds of words. All the way ranging from coordinating conjunction to what verb, WRB. Now let's take an example of these two sentences. So the first sentence is the waiter cleared the plates from the table. So as you can see from the starting, if we use the word take into consideration the, it is a determiner. Now waiter is a noun, cleared is a verb, the is again determiner, the plates are noun, from is not defined here, the is again the determiner and the table is again a noun. Now again if we take into consideration the sentence, the dog ate the cat. Similarly the is the determiner, dog noun, ate is the verb and again it's the same, determiner and the noun. So let's see how we can implement POS tags and do the tagging uh, using the NLTK library. So let us take a sentence. Uh, Timothy is a natural when it comes to drawing. First of all, we'll tokenize it using the word underscore tokenize. And then we are going to use the POS underscore tag on all of these tokens. So as you can see, it has defined Timothy as a noun, is as a verb, uh, as a determiner, natural as an adjective, when as a WRB, adjective and it as a preposition it comes as a verb to and drawing as a verb as well now let's take another example that John is eating a delicious cake so as you can see here the tagger has tagged both the is and eating as verb because it has considered is eating as a single term now this is one of the small shortcomings of the POS taggers when it comes to tagging the words now another concept in natural language processing is NER, which is known as named entity recognition. So the process of detecting the named entities such as a movie, a monetary value, be it an organization, a location, quantities, and a person from a text is known as named entity recognition. Now there are three phases of NER, which is first is the noun phase identification, now this step deals with extracting all the noun phrases from a text using dependency parsing and parts of speech tagging, which is the POS tagging. Now secondly, we have the phrase classification. Now this is the classification step in which all the extracted nouns and phrases are classified into respective categories such as location, names, and much more. Now apart from this, one can curate the lookup tables and dictionaries by combining information from the different sources 
and finally we have the entity disambiguation now sometimes it is possible that the entities are misclassified hence creating a validation layer on top of the result is very useful the use of knowledge graphs can be exploited for this purpose now the popular knowledge graphs are the google knowledge graph the ibm watson and also wikipedia so if we have a look at a certain example suppose this is the sentence the google ceo sundar pichai introduced a new pixel at minnesota roy center event so as you can see google is an organization sundar pichai is a person minnesota is a location and roy center event is also an organization this is an additional layer on top of the POS tagging so as to clarify and give us more depth into what the sentence is about and what the sentence is conveying us. So for using NER in Python, you need to import the any underscore chunk from the NLTK module in Python. So once we have imported any underscore chunk, now let us take this sentence into consideration, which is the US president stays in the White House. Now again, what we need to do is tokenize this sentence and after tokenizing what we need to do is add the POS tags so that it will be easier for us to conclude the NERs. So we are passing the any underscore tags into any underscore chunks function and let's see what's the output. So as you can see it has given D as a determiner, it has given US as an organization and White House is clubbed together as a single entity and it is considered as a facility. So as you can see, adding a layer of dictionary and then adding the tags and then creating the name entity recognition makes the understanding of language so much more easier. Now, as you can see in the NER entity list, we have geosocial political group, geopolitical entity, we have facility, location, organization, and person. So as you saw just from the previous example, as you can see, we have given organization, we have facility. Now, an important thing to consider in NLP is also the syntax. Now, in linguistics, syntax is the set of rules, principles, and the processes that govern the structure of a sentence in a given language. The term syntax is also used to refer to the study of such principles and processes. So, we have a certain rules as to what part of sentence should come up at what position. Now with these rules, we create a syntax tree whenever there is a sentence as an input. So syntax tree in layman terms is basically a tree representation of the syntactic structure of sentences or strings. Now it is a way of representing the syntax of a programming language as a hierarchical tree-like structure. And this structure is used for generating symbol tables for compilers and later code generation. The tree represents all the constructs in the language and their subsequent rules. Now consider the statement, the cat sat on a mat. So as you can see, this is how a syntax tree looks like. We have a sentence, we have the noun phrase, the preposition phrase, and again, the noun phrase is divided into article and noun. Then we have the verb, which is sat. Again, we have the preposition, which is on. And again, finally, we have the noun phrase, which consists of article and the noun. Now in order to render syntax trees in your notebook, you need to install ghost strips, which is a rendering engine. So you can download ghost strip from this downloads page. I'll not go much into the details of that. Now let us discuss an important concept with respect to analyzing the sentence structure, which is chunking. Now chunking basically means picking up individual pieces of information and grouping them into bigger pieces. So as we saw earlier that we have a sentence and we divided it into different tokens that was tokenization and this is sort of like the opposite part or we should say the opposite of what we know as tokenization a little bit of changes to that tokenization part we'll see what are the different changes now the bigger pieces are usually known as chunks here now in the context of NLP chunking means grouping of words or the tokens into chunks now let's have a look at the example of chunking here. So let's consider the statement, we caught the pink panther. So as you can see here, the pink, which is an adjective, panther, which is a noun, and the, which is the determiner, are chunked together into a noun phrase. Now this also helps in determining and the processing of the language. So suppose if someone is asking, whom did we caught this morning? 
So the regular response to this question would be we caught the pink panther. Now the question is asking who? So the pink panther becomes a noun phrase basically. So this is something what the chunking does is that it understands the language and once it has understood what it does is basically picks up the individual pieces of information and groups them into chunks so that it will be easier for us to process that data. So let's take a new sentence. The big cat ate little mouse who was after the fresh cheese. So let's tokenize it and add the POS tags also. So as you can see, just under one line, or I should say under one command, I have tokenized it and I've added the POS tags also. So let's define the grammar here. So next what we are going to do is create a regular expression parser for the grammar NP, which is the grammar which we have provided. And then we'll create the chunk underscore result and we'll pass this whole sentence or I should say the tokens into the chunks. There was a slight error as NLTK was unable to file the GS file, but as you can see here, we have a tree in which the NP is the big cat. The big cat is a noun phrase, it is a verb tree. Then again, we have the noun phrase, which is the little mouse, who is a word phrase, was is a verb, after is in. And again, we have the noun phrase, the fresh cheese. So you can see here, although we do not have a particular tree like structure, we can see that from the outer, we can see we have a tree starting from the start is here and the end is here. And you can see it starts with the noun phrase, the big cat. Now the big cat, as I mentioned earlier in our previous example, similarly to the deep pink panther, it has been taken into consideration as a noun phrase which is basically a chunk and it has created different chunks in the given sentence I should say. So this is it guys. I hope you got an idea of what the different parts of NLP is. What is NLP? How it is used? The different elements of NLP such as starting from tokenization, stop words, stemming, limitization. Again, we have the stop words, part of speech, POS tags, NER, named entity recognition, and after NER, we had the syntax. We created a syntax tree to know how exactly the sentence is arranged and how it uses the dictionary, the POS tags, and the tokenization to create a particular tree so as to form a meaning out of that sentence. And finally, we are using chunking as to chunk together the small tokens into meaningful words. So guys, I hope you like this session and I'm sure you guys will start implementing these procedures on the given text using the NLTK library. And let me tell you one thing guys, the NLTK library is filled with lots and lots of text data and lots and lots of example. This is just the beginning of it. And you can dig deeper into NLP and go into topics like context-free grammar and much more, which is already there in the NLTK package and is very useful when it comes to natural language processing. Thank you.